some board meeting for the Council on Aging Board meeting for the Senior Services Northampton Thursday, April the 9th. Public session. I don't see anybody from the public here, but we can. Uh, some member of the public was supposed to have shown up. They told Jim they might, so we can maybe postpone that. And if they do come in, put them in later. Are you at liberty to say who that was? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. So I didn't know if you were expecting Anne Marie because I just saw her yesterday for registering my granddaughter for a camp, and she if she was unable yeah. today. Of course. No, this was a member. Uh, no, they've had a, uh, there was a, been a death. Okay. Uh, uh, Jan Joseph's husband got <coughs> killed. Um, oh, that's so, too bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I need a motion for the approval of the minutes from March 12th meeting. Who we'll made the discussion on those meetings for? No, we have to do it after we get some a motion started. Yeah. Okay. So moved. I'll make the motion. You uh, anybody second? Okay. okay. Uh, any uh, changes you want to make in the? Yes. Or, yes. You want to make a change. Where it says I said mm -hmm. to that? support the move, it was actually to support Patty only, not to move exactly. Where was that? Black last page, about halfway down the bottom. Okay. Yeah, motion made by Jim Spencer, seconded by Michael and Herman Jr. to support the Recreation Department and the Senior Center. It was to support Patty's efforts in that move. Okay, can I ask you a question? I'm yeah. sorry, I apologize, I wasn't here. Right. Are you saying the motion is the motion wasn't written right, or the yes, the motion wasn't written right. So it was to support. The executive director. Yes. I was assuming that's what we were voting on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if that could be changed, uh, join. Any other changes, corrections? Okay. Do we have to change the vote then? Do we have to vote again? Oh, we have to vote on the exception okay. the minutes. Yes. Now that we made the uh, alterations. Okay. Any other alterations? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, very good. It's passed. So our next bit of business is a staff report from Crystal Cody Stokes. Did I get that right? Yes. That was, that was easy. One to <laughs> I passed out some um, statistics that have been reported through my senior center. Um, the first that I wanted to discuss and give a report on where the volunteer hours that have been recorded from January 2015 through today. Um, as you can see under the various categories, there's an unduplicated number and a duplicated number. The unduplicated number is the individuals that report in that category. And if you look under board members, it says we only have five that are reporting their, their hours. So that needs to change. I need all of you to make sure you scan in and record your volunteer hours because <coughs> we reflect what it takes to run the senior center through staff and volunteer efforts. So it's very important that when I do these reports for the state, federal government, or any other agency that's asking for them, that is accurately reflected based on what it takes to do everything we do whether it's doing triad signs or teaching a class, um, anything that you do that you're not being paid for in this building, please report it. If you can't report it, email me and I'll report it because it doesn't reflect accurately as to how much really goes in to making what we do happen. Um, you guys see all the different categories that we have volunteers volunteering in. Um, you should have all received an invitation to the annual volunteer recognition that's happening on May 3rd. It's a Sunday. It's luncheon served by Seth Myers, so it's going to be a great event and I hope everybody can make it. The next report that I'm giving you is just statistics for the building. And those are for all of the programming that we do. And again, these are just statistics for those individuals that are scanning in with their scan card. And um, we, we do try to catch as many people as possible on their way in, but we are missing some people because we don't have a full-time staffed receptionist mm -hmm. here. Um, 
there are volunteers that do the best they can to process payments, answer phones, and make sure people sign in. Um, as, so there's over 936 individuals that use the senior center. On top of that 936, there's 408 that have scanned in as just being a guest, not actually being a regular person that comes into the building, but we also have people who have scan cards but forget them and sign in as guests. The under 60 guests are at 140. So for currently for this year up until today, the Senior Center has provided 8,565 units of service to those individuals that are scanning in, participating in programming. Um, and, but we are missing, I would say, a portion of the, the reported services due to those people that are not scanning in um, when they come into the building. The Northampton Senior Center has participated in the AARP um, tax program. We hosted this this as being the site that served basically this area because Hatfield and Williamsburg closed. Um, so we serviced Northampton and surrounding communities. Northampton seniors had priority registration for scheduling appointments, but we did provide service to low income seniors and others throughout the community and surrounding communities. Um, the donations that we received from this program from February until this past April the 8th was $1,337. And that we put a donation box out and individuals are given an envelope that explains that their donations help to support senior center programming and events. And we were lucky enough to receive a little over $1,300. So that's really great. That program currently is being held in the social day program, but Patty's doing everything in her power to um, relocate any existing programming so that nothing has to be canceled and rescheduled or trying to find space, other space in the building so that we can continue to receive those donations and those community contacts because we have a number of people that utilize that program. Patty and I just, um, today, Patty authorized us to have a Youth Works student come in on April 22nd to shadow staff. Um, this person is interested in being in community human services and they will have a placement. They're from Northampton. They'll have a placement through the Youth Works uh, program through Community Action over the summer. The placement may be here or somewhere else in the community. Um, that they wanted to shadow, so that's going to happen on Wednesday, April 22nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, many of you may know that since July of 2014, Linda DiMarcurio has been placed at the Northampton Senior Services through the Senior Aid Program, um, and she's been absolutely wonderful. She's been at the front desk working Mondays through Thursdays, helping with the My Senior Center registrations that form that people fill out, as well as some of our programs that are community programs. Individuals may not have scan cards, but they'll sign in for, and then she inputs that data into My Senior Center, as well as doing various other um, administrative assistant type responsibilities, um, which has helped us out greatly. And she's applying for jobs and looking for jobs um, while she's placed here, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed she stays here as long as possible. <laughs> but I also <laughs> she does a yeah. very good job. I yeah. deal with her a lot. So. And um, we are, you know, doing the best. I just can't imagine. I I can imagine us, you know, doing everything that she's been doing because we were doing it before. Um, but I feel like every time a little piece of what we do is taken away or given to a different staff, then we just add more. So it's not like, you know, so whatever, it's not like it goes away. So whatever she might be doing for us um, just allows us to kind of add more in another direction, which is, is very beneficial and we're very thankful for it. And that's all I have at this time. Is there any questions? 
I just have a comment. I, I find it, I mean, I've worked on boards before and with volunteers, and we have not really um, been clear about how much value, the dollar value that they add. And it is, it's pretty astounding to look at the figure that comes into the center from uh, volunteer hours. And so I appreciate that. Volunteers have really contributed a lot. That it is probably a lot more than we don't even have the ability to put in there. Yeah, there is because we have programs that are you know volunteers are off site like the companion program on things like that, and they're not coming in here regularly enough. And when they do come in here, it's to work out or to do social things. So they don't even think when they scan their card to record their hours. And then we have facilitators like Jim and Rufus. Who are teaching classes who make you know a syllabus and they make all this different things that have to do with how the class is going to work and do all this stuff at home and they don't even track those hours <laughs> so you know it's it's really amazing um, how much people care about us and put into making us all that we can be it's really amazing. and I would think that this eighty thousand six hundred and nine dollars would probably be equivalent to probably a a full-time equivalent of a staff person. Yeah, it would be more would be than one point. staff person. Yeah, yeah, more than one. I don't know what the benefits yeah. are. So we really rely on, yeah. you know, the goodness of volunteers. these people are only making a buck an hour. Yeah. No. <laughs> when you look at it. And this, this report's way. only January through April yeah. um, of this year. So at the volunteer <clears throat> recognition luncheon, um, I usually present the mayor with a check that it's the total number of hours times what Massachusetts rate is per volunteer hour times the number of volunteer hours, and it's a mm -hmm. pretty hefty chunk. And what is that rate, Massachusetts rate per volunteer hour? Well, it changes each year, so I right now I don't know what 2014 rate is. But it's not a dollar an hour. Well, no. it, it would be by the looks of things here. It, it could be like $20, uh, $20 an hour. Could yeah. More. <laughs> I was hoping it wasn't worth a dollar an hour. No. <laughs> Sorry for to interrupt. No. So the number of hours, I mean, these are separated into different um, dollar amounts based mm -hmm. on, because my senior center has a dollar amount based oh, wow. on the position. So you can easily like do the math to figure out if you divided for the class instructor facilitator it's the pay equivalent is thirteen thousand four hundred and fourteen dollars and divided by 489 hours you know would give you like what the hourly rate is so you won't think to figure that out <laughs> well, next time I'll figure it out for you. No, we'll do that. That will scare me like a whole lot. <laughs> but don't worry, you won't get the cash in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there are a number of things um, every year that we kind of miss when we're doing, um, you know, putting together all the numbers. So there are things on here. So it, it, what I've been starting to do is take the calendar and put it into the categories. Something like um, the tax work off program isn't in here, or um, what we do for uh, triad. And you know, another example is um, Mike Ahern and his wife go out and put all the triad signs up. So we don't have those hours recorded anywhere or as a special item within the triad um, category. So uh, it, it's just like wanting to track every single thing that we do. Is it, you know, there's what I call the invisible um, services that we do too. You know, you don't see when I'm notarizing um, documents for a senior, you don't see Michelle um, meeting with a, a client for um, health benefits or SNAP. Um, so it's like there's so many different things. It's not like somebody is physically in a room um, getting a service all the time. It's, it's, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one going into homes uh, or going into the hospital to help somebody fill out a form. Or so it's multi-layered, I think. Certainly is. Thank you very much, Kristen. Okay. Now we'll go on to the finances. Ready? Yep. So everybody has a copy of the financial report for our um, salaries and then our uh, ordinary maintenance um, for running the area. We have funds still in each of those. And as I usually say, you know, come 
May we start transferring money from our grant accounts and our revolving accounts to pay for our portion of what we're obligated for um, to pay uh, for salaries. Uh, and, um, I, I, and again, one of the newer things is the um, $90,000 that we secured uh, from the grant that Crystal wrote for the benefits. Um, so that's another whole uh, account that we're gonna have anything to do with the salary of that person, um, any of the expenditures all come out of that grant. So that's, that's an additional amount. And again, that's a three year grant. So, um, and then as of July 1st, we'll be in a new fiscal year. Any questions on that? Anything for 16 yet? Well, on, other than um, waiting for the city council, you know, we had a my budget meeting with the mayor and the finance director for FY16. Um, you know, we all had to do uh, level services, which meant you know you couldn't add anything um, new for. Well, I guess you look at keeping your services as they are, but we we have a tendency to always keep adding more um, services or programs. And um, usually that's just absorbed somehow within the current um, staff. Yeah. So as of July 1st, it'll be a new budget year. Okay. Director's report? Yep. So I'm going to say most of my time, I'm going to kind of combine it with um, the buildings and grounds. Um, most of my um, waking hours has been about the relocation um, of us as well as the relocation of the recreation department and figuring out how our programs um, will be moved into certain areas so that we create the right building environment and you know not every room is appropriate for a particular group so so far there have been some changes um, and I'll just note the library the library um, you may not even think that there's anything different looking in the library but now when you walk in it's pretty much like the library and then you move further and it's more a uh, programming area like this morning the knitting club was in there uh, Tuesday we have the caregiver support group in there so that room is is now used for programming when it wasn't really used for programming before so that that's one of the big changes um, in that room but it's looking at the games room, um, the fitness center, the great room, the bistro, as to how we're going to use all those rooms a little bit differently um, to meet the, uh, our needs of um, not having that room anymore um, down in social <coughs> So it's, it's figuring all that out. So I'm just gonna say that's been a lot. When there's a program in the library, <coughs> is the library basically <coughs> It is. Yeah, there'll be a sign that says okay. library let's say the program goes from 10 to 11 30 library open at 11 30. Okay. Yeah. and then for instance the, the um, knitting club was in there this morning but people could still go in there and get books because that's different than when there's a support group in there and you know privacy and confidentiality and all of that so right. people can't right. go in there but you know the library will still be open people can get books and um, you know sign them out and bring them back or sit in <coughs> so it's it's um, <coughs> maximizing that that space as we will with all the space and soon we hope to get our librarian back oh yes okay so that's mm -hmm. Susie that would be great mm -hmm. yeah nice time to get back um, so you know I'll keep you informed of what we're doing um, I've had a couple meetings um, with Anne Marie Mojo who was not able to be here today because of another commitment but um, you know, in the future, she can come, and uh, you know, I have invited them to be part of our open house, which will be um, in May for Older Americans Month. That that could be a good time for them. <coughs> their opening for everybody to see what their their space is like. Um, so Central Services knows what kinds of things we need done within our portion of the senior center, so that um, you know we can either store things in new places or I've asked that the Board of Health move all of their items out of our basement because we need that <coughs> space now. So there's just a lot of pieces to put together and um, we have to be out of that room by April 17th. So by next Friday we have to have everything out and 
you know, you can all take a look down there. It's set up for bingo right now because um, that's where bingo is held. Uh, it's pretty empty back there. It's tables and chairs and a few oddball things, but it pretty much we cleaned out the bigger pieces. And you know, I have to say, Bob guys have been wonderful to help figure out and adapt um, what we have to where we need to move things. And he's very ambitious, so appreciate that. As well as the staff, you know, we're all trying to pitch in and do what we need to do. And uh, next Monday morning, um, staff uh, can dress down because we're going to be moving a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, so it gives us a chance to Where did you find places to put what was there? What's that? Where did you find places to put what was there? The store you saw? Well, some of it is, there is no place yet. But, there, you know, it's like reorganizing some closets and really getting rid of things that, yeah, someday we'll use it. Well, someday is here, so. Um, it's, you know, just reconfiguring like the storage closet. I don't know if any of you have been in that storage closet off the great room, but it is so full. You know, it's our tables and chairs, so all those tables and chairs have to go somewhere. Yeah, I don't have a solution yeah. for every single thing, but yeah. it'll it'll happen. So there's some plans about other rooms and what we're going to do, and um, that continuous book sale is going to be cut in half. We're still going to have books out there, but instead of six tables, it'll only be three tables. Um, yeah, so it's it's figuring it all out. It's a puzzle. Um, so the board training that Emmett Schmarzo is doing, it's next Thursday, April 16th, and it would be great if people wanted to come. There's board members coming from other communities, um, but if you've never been to one, it is really a great opportunity to know, you know, what a board member is, responsibilities, Emmett has wonderful stories to tell, and even if you've been to one, it's worth coming again because it just is sort of a new enlightenment through uh, Department of Elder Affairs eyes, because um, Emmett does have vast knowledge of the whole state with um, boards and the councils on aging. So that's the 16th, and registration is quarter nine to 9.15, and then there's, um, he thinks it usually goes 11.30, but you could really sit there till three o'clock to listen to him, because he's <coughs> that engaging. So if you want to come, let me know or give me a call or send an email. Um, on Wednesday, April 29th at 10 o'clock, um, Mayor Narkowitz will be here in the building to answer questions um, and provide information to anybody who comes. It's open to the public, um, not just seniors. Um, and it will be here in the senior center. Um, so if you're interested, that you can come to that. And, that was prompted because a lot of seniors or people coming into the building were concerned about you know, what was happening with yeah. the recreation department, so he'll be here for that. Um, today, we hired Cynthia Terrell, um, or maybe it's actually T T Terrell, um, I have to get the correct pronunciation, um, and she's going to be our benefits um, counseling manager. Um, and she's going to start next. Uh, Tuesday um, it's a 19.5 hour position per week and again it's that three-year grant and the grant is what's paying for that salary as well as any expenditures that are needed for that program and I think it's a very exciting program it was um, a worthwhile thing for Crystal to participate in writing the grant um, and then for us to be awarded the grant so I think it's it's a uh, a good opportunity for us to really get out in the community as a regional program uh, using volunteers and uh, really assisting seniors not only in uh, places like senior centers but also in your homes <coughs> the other big thing uh, is our 13th annual health and safety fair I know you've heard me talk about it um, May 7th and um, I'm just putting together the sheets on the needs for volunteers because not only is it the health and safety fair that's going on, but the coffee shop, the bistro, <coughs> um, delivering meals to the vendors, um, to their tables. Um, and uh, so if you have time on the 7th, that's the actual fair, but the day before, we literally clean out the lobby to set up tables in there for the vendors. It kind of goes like clockwork, but you still need hands to move the hands of the clock. So, 
Um, and currently we have 50 exhibitors already registered and uh, we can take up to 65. So, and we usually, you know, sell out. The annual appeal started in March and that's when we have our envelope uh, in the city census. <clears throat> Excuse me, and to date we've um, had $3,029 donated for our, um, and that's in about a month's time, so that's very good. That's that's one of our bigger, um, quote, fundraisers for the uh, senior services. In May, it's Older Americans Month, so we always try to put on a lot of events and um, special programs. And we'll have a booklet out. It'll also be in the insert in the Daily Hampshire Gazette for May. Uh, and the, we are having the open house Sunday, May 17th, so I would encourage board members to come. Um, we'll have demonstrations and displays. Uh, we'll have refreshments, entertainment, and staff will be here, um, and we'll do tours. Then, um, What's that date on there? It's May 17th. It's a Sunday. It'll be 1 to 3. I just want to let you know there will be a lot of people in town that weekend because that's the weekend of Smith College's undergraduate graduation. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll have to get info up there so they can come down here and <laughs> see a different kind of senior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Um, uh, we're going to be at the Life Enrichment Expo um, at the Basketball Hall of Fame uh, May 19th from 11 to 3. Joanne will be the lead on that particular um, exhibit. That's uh, a really big like fair like what we do um, and it's uh, at the Basketball Hall of Fame. And as I said, a lot of extra programs that we'll be doing and um, you know, all the staff's working on, on putting that together. And um, at the last meeting, Bob had talked about um, joining Highland Valley Elder Services again with our three um, members. And um, what Alan we met is doing, who is the executive director, is going around to all the senior centers to meet with the director. So um, he actually will be coming here uh, sometime in April um, to have a tour and to talk with me. So. I'm sure that the advice, I'm sorry, not advisory, but that the members, you know, that's going to be a topic of conversation. So I'll just mention that it was brought up mm -hmm. at the meeting um, for three members to join. And that's what I have. Yeah. Okay, any questions on this? On the open house? Can I do my thing again? Yeah. <coughs> I'm I'm going to publicly push it a little bit, but, but we have four of my photographers. One of them has a show at Linda. No, uh, what's the senior Lather. center in Stanton? Lather Home. It's some of the gorgeous photography show. We have two of them are finishing their books and will be printed this month and will actually be out as public authors from the book group. And we've had we've had we've won seven contests out of the photography club. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> they should be really proud. Yeah. Yeah. Proud, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got students that have to stop like that. Well, like one of the ladies who's just finishing her book up, she's 93. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool That's for a 93 year old woman yeah. to put her book out. Sure. Yeah, yeah we would get, this room will be yours again. <laughs> we'll do it up good. Okay, moving on to old business. Update the kick the tires campaign. Yes. Um, so currently um, there is $58,338.80 for that van. Wow. So one van will be, um, if approved by the city council, um, from capital improvements, and the other van is one that we're purchasing. So with the funds that we've received through uh, kick the tires, um, that purchasing them together is you know, going to be a, a benefit and selling our old van. <coughs> so we'll have two vans. 
Yay. Which is yeah. That's a huge leap from a few weeks ago. <laughs> and then yeah. we can uh, possibly start on a transportation uh, program that you were talking, have been talking about in the last yeah, few so, years. Yeah, so the transportation, it, the, the main focus is getting people to and from the senior center for programs and services. Uh, and then we'll see how it goes to expand it. Uh, but I, you know, we'll just say that it's been uh, really great working with many of the contributors um, to the, the kick the tires. I mean, some people it could have been $5 and then somebody with $20,000. So, you know, every donation is very important and uh, each one just bring, brought us closer to being able to purchase a van. So, thank you, Northampton and surrounding. So do we have enough to purchase it? With money that we have in the uh, gift account, then we can purchase that second ticket. Yeah. And buying two, we may get a little discount anyway, so it may turn out to be even better. So, yeah. 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 So. Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Senior Center Parks and Recreation location. Yeah, we I talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, other and old business? I have one I want to mention and continue to mention, and that's, guys already mentioned it, the Highland Valley Elder Vision Board of Directors. I think we should be represented on there, if at all possible. I know the place has problems. They're going to continue to have problems, but I think because they do handle all of the state money for our area, or most all of the state money for our area for a great many programs, I think we should at least be represented on there and find out what's going on and possibly engineer change if we can. If not, at least be there to find out what's going on. Uh, so if anybody wants to volunteer, think it over or we also have, we, we can also take at least one community member. Mm -hmm. Don't have to be all board members. We can take a community member. So if you know someone who is interested and might want to take a once a month jaunt over to Bay, uh, Bay State uh, and uh, mm -hmm. Colorado Colorado Building and uh, yeah. Yeah. sit down and have a meeting. And if they're out of town, they will pay mileage. When are the meetings? I have some of them on Ah. What was the days of the week? day of the week. It was a weird day. It was a Monday. It was a Monday afternoon, I think. This it was a Monday. The second the Monday or third Monday it was in the middle of the month all the time. Yeah. Okay. Well, afternoon. It's a Monday afternoon, yeah. I'd have to look back at it. It's been a while. I, I left it in Jahari. I forgot everything. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes, it, it, it would be good to have someone representing North Hampton. And we have up to three members. We can have up to three board members. So if you uh, talk to that person, you can submit the names. I think the procedure is submitted to us, and then we submit it to the mayor. All right. Well, yes. If, if I get the name, and then I can present it that name to the board, and then the board can vote. Second Monday at one thirty. Second Monday at one thirty. Okay. Okay. And is it an advisory board? No, no. it is a complete corporate board full powers and responsibilities. But you would be representing Northampton, so you know, it's the liability. Somewhat. Yeah. Are you guys thinking of doing it again? No. No. No, we, okay. you just we would not have to spare ourselves out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But you feel that so would you take up the mantle and well, I, I think we should be represented. Yeah. North Ham is the largest city in their area. That's why we have three representatives. In the area. And it does handle all the uh, money for all the uh, Meals on Wheels and nursing yeah. programs, home care programs, all sort of thing. For the state, for uh, mostly uh, you know, this county. So uh, yeah. I think we should at least be, have our two bits worth in there. Something to say about it. I think North Ham should be represented. Who appoints them? Uh, the board. We so, the, oh, so we so different places have seats, and then like we yeah. appoint our people, and yeah, yes. other cities appoint every mayors, every community right? that they serve uh, has gets a certain one or two in Amherst, I think, and three in, in mm -hmm. gets a, a member, and then usually the council on aging is what they go through mm -hmm. there, but they don't have to be a member of the council on aging; they can be a member of the community. No, we've had the members of the community. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't know much about it, so yeah. except for what you had oh, before. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, any other uh, business and all business? Yeah, I'd like to go back and 
two where the, we talked about the senior center and the uh, Parks and Recreation Department. I first want to thank Jim for his, his letter and his insight and all the figures that he put together that really opened my eyes to how much use that room gets. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really good to put out there. Secondly, many, many of our participants here have approached me concerned about the move. And they're very upset about it. And some of it is uh, justified, and some of it is just misinformed. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, one of the biggest concerns is the parking. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very much concerned about that. Especially, I guess, since we're going to put in um, uh, handicap parking, which can take some spaces, and yeah. the rec department. And the, I don't know if it was, was fairly said about how much activity the rec department gets in terms of people visiting it every day. And again, a lot of concerns. Well, some of the staff approached me today of all the volunteering I get doing this building, I meet a lot of people. And one of the one of the ladies said to me that she's very upset that youth is going to be mixed with seniors in certain programs. And I said, well, I haven't heard of that yet. I don't know if that's going to happen. Well, I guess it was like a, the Zumba class or something. She heard that it was a combination class. I said, I don't never heard of that. I don't think it's like that's going to happen. As far as I know, there's no but plans to I, do I, this. Yeah, but that it, and I'm not specifically going there. I'm just saying that that's how <clears throat> people are starting to perceive things yeah. and how how they're starting to think about things. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you've got to be careful. I was somewhat blindsided by the announcement of last meeting. Didn't expect it, and I didn't know we all were. Yes. And, yeah. Totally. And uh, I did a lot of thinking since then. And I certainly would not have voted the way I voted back then now. And I'm glad Jim amended his because that's what I thought I was voting for. Because I do think we have a responsibility in representing the, this new population, if you will, or people that use the center in order to build for it and be careful mm -hmm. of how things go. And I'm pretty confident that Patty will be careful in that respect. Um, Last thing is, uh, I called, well, I went to the pothole hotline. <laughs> and I told them about the Smith Street really? out here. Oh, this is yeah. cool. I said, I, said uh, I made a formal, it, it, it's not an easy thing to do, to report potholes. I don't know if anybody did it. I do it's it every day. You don't call up and I do it every they want day. your name, your address, your email, yep. you know, how old your youngest son is, oh, what you have for dinner tomorrow night. You know. <laughs> I call up, I tell them where it is, and they come. I did anyway because that's really? horrible out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you don't expect it with the rain puddles today, oh, uh, it's going to be. So anyway, I did report. I, maybe I think you may have reported it or mentioned it too. Yeah, I actually talked to Ned Huntley on um, Tuesday, and we were in a meeting, and he sat next to me, and I told him about this street. Yeah. We need an orange barrel. Actually, you need two. Of them. Oh yeah, that'd be. Good. I think there is one barrel. There is yeah. one. Actually, you yeah. take a car and drop it in. It'd probably be all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, so he brought, I saw him write it down. Yeah, well, so I'm that's the that 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 street needs redoing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but you are yeah. correct. That it's mm -hmm. I, I, a bad road. road. I guess I want to finish up to I just remembered one of my last thoughts on this deal here. I don't want to seem, and I don't think this board is, is thinking that way, that it's an us against them mentality. I don't think we're that well, you know, it's us against the rec department. I don't think it's that I don't want to be seen mm -hmm. as that. I don't think the rec department has much of a choice, just like we don't have much right. of a choice. They can vote it out. It's not just the just fact that, that we're, you know, I've done plenty of work with the rec department. I have the utmost respect. And I was on boards. I first met Michael on the soccer board, what, four years ago, Michael? Mm -hmm. And uh, I became a board member and had meetings down in the rec department. And I, I it's not that. And it's, uh, it's not that, that I hope people don't perceive it as I hope this board is done thinking that way. It's just that we kind of want to protect what people work hard to get and, and, and the people that are going to use this here. And I, I hope, I hope, I wish the rec department well and I hope things go well and I hope 
they can find a, a good spot and maybe a more permanent spot as this is temporary. This is spot. Permanent. Yeah. Well, I think when when Anne Marie can come to a meeting, she will be able to address all the questions. Mm -hmm. But um, John, one thing you said though, I don't, I don't think I don't think there'll be a lot of kids during the summer. There may be uh, teenager, uh, no high school kids and older who have to come in because they're the camp counselors. But as we know from mm -hmm. our kids going to the camp. They they're not they don't come anywhere near the rec department. Right. Yeah. You as a parent go and register them. Right. But they're not there at all. I, right. I, really you know? paperwork, I don't think understand some it. of our population understands that, yeah. and yeah. they're concerned. Yeah. Are they worried? Mm -hmm. Is that I, I, I want to thank uh, Jonathan Hyde, the director for Salva. I t had a good talk with him the other day, and he's met with you, I guess, or talked with you, and. And other people and he's making room over behind the building for parking and building a shed out there for recreation oh, yeah. storage and he's doing everything he can uh, to do it i just yeah. hope the new yeah. director who will be coming in uh, the same. Uh, yeah. shortly now yeah. because they're going through their problem but uh, i want to Put that out too. He's been very good to us here and yes. working with us back and forth, you know. And I <clears> certainly <throat> appreciate all he's done for us. Yeah. Are these things that could be discussed when the mayor is here for this meeting that's coming up? That if you say things like this, that we're not going to have kids going to Zoom with class, bring all that stuff up so that people will be aware of that what's going on. I mean, I don't know what this meeting's going to be, but and I'm working, so I'm not going to be there. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm sure the mayor will answer any these, questions. And, uh, yeah, and these are a good thing that I mean, I I had not heard that people would expect the kids to be in classes or something. No, yeah. And I, I oh, recommend these people to come to that meeting. They don't have come, to be yeah. so, yeah. I think that's what they need to do is to get it all out in the mm -hmm. open and exactly what's happening. Yeah. I mean, and we had no choice, mm -hmm. so we're working to do right. the best we can. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the old transparency. We need to be as yeah. transparent as possible yeah. 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 to know what's going on. And people will be may not be uh, still happy with it, but they well, at least know no. what's going on. I'm not happy with it. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, it, it is what it is, and you just <coughs> work with it and do the best you can, and yeah. hope for the best, that's all. Good. That's life. Any other comments? No? Okay. Uh, new business, Senior Center Advance, you want to call over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty that's much. It. Uh, just anything else uh, anyone wants to bring up? I just want to mention. Okay. There are flyers um, and posters about the health and safety fair, so if you frequent a location that might be willing to have a poster up, and the smaller flyers are nice just to hand out or put on a counter somewhere for people to take. Okay, do I hear a motion to uh, adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone disagree? No votes on that.